Hello, my name is Christina Singh from Destinique. Welcome to our music inspiration series, Future Live Musicians. In this episode, we'll cover 10 performance techniques that will help you win over any crowd, anywhere. We'll explore confidence, dress rehearsals, crowd engagement, vocal stamina, and much more. I'm gonna show you some performance secrets that I've learned over the last 15 years of performing vocals live on stage. Future live musicians, let's go from studio to stage. When you're the singer, you have the ultimate job of relaying the lead melody and the emotion of the song. If you're the songwriter, this is your ultimate reward for spending all those hours crafting the melody and the harmony. If I still get nervous sometimes, I pretend that I'm at a party and I'm hosting it for my friends and I'm leading them and I'm sharing a new piece of my soul with them. When you exude this joy from yourself, others will follow and feel it resonate from you. If you're really, really shy, you should always start out performing for some close friends or family. You can even start live streaming for just a few select friends. I recommend always recording yourself. Sometimes things are really obvious that I wouldn't think are obvious. Like I'll flap my arm like this or I'll close my eyes too much and these things spell themselves out really quickly. Also really good motivator too, because sometimes if you record yourself and you nail a take, you're like, I didn't think to do that. I gotta try that at the show. If you document these achievements, then you can always look back and say, hey, I need to work on this, or hey, that was great. Let's keep working on that section. The technology is there, use it. Record your rehearsals physically and audio wise. Okay, a word on mic technique. When you're singing, Good technique, well don't ever cup the mic, don't do this, it sounds terrible. Hold it a couple inches from your mouth. This is the extension of you to the universe. This is your gift that God gave you in your body and it's being amplified to the universe. This should be an extension of your face. See how it's, I'm not turning and it's going like this. It is literally attached by an invisible wire to my face because that's how everyone can hear me. When you're singing a super tender part, you can go right on there. You're gonna sing a really loud part, Pull it away, like not there, four to six inches so you don't overload the mic. And again, the more texture and resonation that you can give the mic, the better. Get right on there. Get a microphone, practice with it. Practice throwing it around, befriend that thing. If you buy a really good mic and you get to perform with it, you're super comfortable with it, you're not singing into the spit of somebody else that sang into it before you, get a mic. Another reason why you should buy a mic is so that you can plug it into an audio interface at home and practice listening to your voice on the mic in headphones, okay? You can hear the difference when you're like this on the mic and when you're like this and using bad mic technique. Close your eyes and listen to your voice when you're singing. You will hear the difference between good mic technique and bad mic technique. When you approach the stage, always address the crowd. Always address the audience. You're being blessed with their attention. Say hello to them. Welcome down to our performance, our home, our art. They're there to absorb what you have to offer. Say hello to them, engage with them, make eye contact with them. I like to split the crowd into four quadrants. Left, right, back, and front. Always treat the people at the front, giving you the most energy, like the VIP that they are, because they're giving you energy. And then you stalk over to the right. Sing the verse to them. Stalk over to the left, sing the pre-chorus here, and then always try to be as big and bold as possible so the back of the room can feel you and hear you and make eye contact with the people at the back of the room too. Reach far up into the stadiums. Let your energy be infectious. If you don't know what to lead with, joy is always a good one. Fearlessness is also a great one. Strength. They're watching for you. This is your ride. You gotta drive the car. Give directions to the audience. They love this, trust me. You'd be surprised, they eat it up. Put your hands up. Wave them to the left. To the right. How you feeling tonight, New York? Where are the ladies at? Ask questions. Engage with them, talk to them. They want to be led, that's why they're at a show. But you can also let the context of the song drive your performance too, like if you're singing a sad verse, you know? Own it. 
you'd be surprised how standing still and letting the light shine on you and when you're singing something really emotional, just letting it be small for a bit before you get big in the chorus. That's really good use of dynamics. I like to call using this technique the diamond stage. In the same vein as dividing your audience into four quadrants, you should divide your stage into four quadrants. Left, right, back, and front. And use these as little anchor points. Add more if you want. You can have a mid-left, mid-right. Always have little anchor points so that you just don't look like you're meandering. Never meander. Just in, in a musical interlude, not sure where I should stand. This is my anchor point. Hey people, what's up? Next anchor point, really strong stride over here. Let's go. Anchor point, I always like to add one by Bobby. Put my leg up on his uh, kick drum, do a little head banging. Maybe another anchor point is another band member. But just have these as your little cheat sheets in the back of your pocket, just so you always know where you're going because people are watching you to lead them, right? I mean, obviously be spontaneous, but if you have little anchor points to go to, then you don't look like you're lost. If you have the luxury of having a lighting tech, you could even pre-mark these anchor points in advance so he knows, hey, she's going there. Holy cow, let's strobe it there. I've done this in the past and it's super effective. Be dynamic. Treat it like a story arc, the beginning, the drama, the resolution, the end, little peaks and valleys so that your set has nice flow and exciting segments. But you have to be quiet to sound loud at certain points. When I first started, one of my biggest mistakes was always bouncing around. This was me on stage the whole time. I was just like, I'm here, watch me. And Bobby pointed it out on me at rehearsal. He's like, on camera, he's like, look, you look like you're a bouncing puppy. You look nervous. And that was probably true. I was really nervous and I didn't know what to do. So we worked on it. I worked with a choreographer, Anne Lawton, who's worked with Cirque du Soleil and Disney, and she stresses sometimes just standing super still and making big movements. Sing just in a really strong stance. Let the lighting work. Do a turn. Stalk back. Stalk forward. And then obviously there's parts of the set that you want to go ballistic just but if you go like this the whole time then it just gets boring right so if you do the build and sometimes it's even more effective to stand still during a drop DJs do that they're like build 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 and then drop and if there are parts in the track that you plan to go ballistic in then always plan for a little break afterwards in the set so you can catch your breath like right now I mean I'm gonna you know take a break and sing an easier part or let Bobby do an interlude or something else so that you, you can plan ahead. It's like interval training, right? You can't just run 10 miles an hour the whole time, right? You gotta pace yourself. Always do a dress rehearsal a few days before the show in what you're gonna wear. Put on your belt pack, put it on your in-ear monitors, use the mic that you're gonna practice with, practice with a mic stand, it goes without saying, you should try to look your best on stage at all times. It's absolutely one of the most fun parts of being the lead singer. You get to show your image, people are taking photos of you, you want to look great. But wardrobe malfunctions can add huge hurdles on stage. If those thrift store heels snap off on stage, that's an ultimate fail. If that tube top lifts up and your boobs fall out, darn it. If you're a guy and you got a new jacket, it keeps falling off your shoulders and you spend your whole set doing this and you look nervous, it's caught on camera. Wear what you're gonna wear, do at least two or three songs to make sure, hey, your ears are staying in. You know, one time the waistband of my skirt was not strong enough to keep my belt pack on. Well, it fell off, I was left in the dark, I had no monitoring for a whole song, sang out of tune. It could have been a great performance, but it sucked because of a wardrobe malfunction. Don't let this happen to you. Make sure you're comfortable for the entire length of your set. People are there to hear your vocals first. Everything else is gravy. Stage props and instruments. Why not? You're here to play, right? It's called playing when you're on stage. Have fun with it. Dress up your mic stand with a scarf. Whip it around. Use a megaphone. CO2 gun, why not? Bring an instrument on stage. You don't have to be the most virtuosic piano player or guitar player to play a really tender part in the song but these little antics are what give your performance excitement and flow and show people that you've been working on your show. You're not just there to 
get through the song. You're there because you've worked on this performance for them to enjoy. They're gonna feel it, they're gonna know it, they're gonna see the effort, and they're gonna appreciate it. Get vocal lessons. I can't really stress this one enough. I mean, I'm kind of biased because I've taken quite a few in my life. I started out as a classical singer in college and then I moved on to contemporary jazz voice. And then I went on to study speech level singing with Spencer Welch in Vancouver here. I cannot recommend this teacher enough. Speech level singing is something that is being taught to a lot of the biggest stars in the world. It's a technique where you sing as if you were talking. You're not shouting even though you're singing big notes. You're using your pipes to sustain those notes in a really healthy way. You should look it up, speech level singing. I also really recommend getting lessons just because it's ear training. Hey look, you might be blessed with the most best God-given tone and that's great. And you're gonna get far with that. But staying in tune with a full band or in a musical or during a live pop performance televised, being in tune is integral to being a good singer. And vocal lessons and doing exercises and just training the vocal cords to know the spaces between those notes in the scale, that becomes effortless after a while if you do enough lessons. Then when that stuff goes to the back seat and just becomes like reflex for you, then you can start to play. Then you can get dance lessons and do choreo. But if you're still struggling with just even maintaining pitch and timing, it will uh, impede your performance. The guitar player, he spent hours doing scales. The drummer doing paradiddles. You should own your instrument as much as everyone else in the band. It's your duty. A word about lighting. If they can't see you, then they can't really hear you as well. Trust me, if you're in the light and you're being lit properly, it's like a feast for the eyes. I can hear the great audio. I can see her, what she's wearing. When you're first starting out, you're not going to get as much production as the bigger artists, but you are going to get some lighting and you got to seek out that spotlight. And if you see that lighting guy in the rafters, work with him. If you're really, really just starting out and there's no lighting, go rent some lights. Go to Long and McQuaid and rent some lights for like 50 bucks. The bigger level of production and professionalism that people see you at, the bigger the shows you'll be offered in the long run. Own your vocals. By the time you get to your performance, you shouldn't really be fumbling around for that next lyric. Oh, oh my God, what key is that song in? It should be ingrained and that will offer you confidence so that that stuff's, hey, it's just off my shoulders. It's already there. Now I'm just involved in entertaining you. Practice your parts and know them like the back of your hand. Always do a warm up right before your show. Do some scales or just sing to a song that you know stretches you your entire range. Just so you know when you're on stage, you're not gonna crack there, especially if you're gonna be belting. Make sure you belt a little bit right before because I've, I've not warmed up before and sometimes when I go to belt, it just hurts. You could injure yourself. In my warm up, I even do push ups and lunges to just physically expand my lungs. My lungs are the engine for what I'm about to do. Expand them. Somewhat have a plan of what you're gonna do between songs. Write a set list and know, like the worst is, finish my song, thank you. No dead air, engage the audience, you're the leader. If there is gonna be dead air, get somebody else to do a loop or a guitar. I just, I'm not a huge fan of dead air unless you're about to tell like a super intimate story. But hey, that's not dead air, you're telling a story. Lead the people. Just a quick note on exercising your body. You don't have to be a triathlete, okay? Just stay in shape because you are the only instrument in the band that literally your body is your instrument. Your lungs need to be in shape. Don't smoke, it damages your voice. Be healthy, exercise. It not only engages your muscles and your lungs, it engages your mental ability to facilitate you in this crazy business. Come on, this is the show business. It can get really grimy and really funky. If you exercise, it'll keep you centered. It'll tell the universe that you appreciate this temple and this gift that you were given. Keep your voice healthy, drink lots of water, treat it like a gift, because it is. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of the tutorial and I know you're ready to own your next performance. So let's recap the 10 tips. Confidence is key. Use good mic technique. Engage with the crowd. Use anchor points on stage. Be dynamic. Do a dress rehearsal. Use stage props or instruments. Get vocal lessons. Search for the light. Own your vocals.
I hope you can find use in these tips and tricks that I just shared with you and use them as a little seasoning in your next performance so you're more comfortable and you enjoy it and you're a little more prepared and you get to shine really bright next time you're blessed with a performance. Peace out, guys. Words with friends.